Being as young as they are, they probably don't have the nerves the way some of the older guys might perhaps, and they're just going at it full bore here. So you see lots of speed and lots of energy here in the early going of this first half. Two teams that are trying to establish scoring chances right now. And you'll notice the uh, superb condition of the field here at Birchmount Stadium. And you can see the trophy making its way around the stadium. Big moment for those young under 10s. Yes, indeed. You know, they'll remember this, this tournament uh, for the rest of their lives. I re recall being an under-16 Robbie champion in 83, and uh, it, was, it was a great uh, feeling to carry that trophy around and something I'll treasure for a long time to come, one good part of my soccer career. Oh, well, I would imagine so, Steve. Fond memory indeed. But uh, once again, I was saying that the, the fine condition of the field here at Birchmount Stadium, the Parks and, Rec and Recreation people have done a superb job grooming this field. And here now it is down inside that Mississauga end. And it's scrambled at this point back out towards the center, in our center area. Mississauga trying to gain control, but Whitby are quick to take the ball away. And now perhaps Whitby will take the ball forward and we'll watch and see if they take advantage of that height that they do have you mentioned about, Steve. Yes. But, of course, they could not get it around the goal there, so there was no chance to set up any... Matt Wheeling. And once... ...with their possession. And a nice play there by... Number 19, that's Jason Schleifer that we mentioned earlier. He took the ball away from that Mississippi. And a long one indeed, but right to a waiting Whitby player. Another tall one, Antonia Scala. And here's a free kick now for Mississauga. And they set up with a long pass, but it is taken away. There's a chance though. And Stevie broke free at the last moment and had that shot. Yeah, there seemed to be a little bit uh, lackadaisical defensive play. Should have been a little bit quicker, quicker played back to the keeper. Yes, indeed, because the Whitby player did have the ball. The and Mississauga Carolina. player jumped on that opportunity, rushed in and uh, created a good chance. Using his speed. Whitby now have the free kick. And it's a long one, deep into the Whitby end, but the defender there for the Whitby team, or pardon me, for the Mississauga team, was quick to take it away. And Mississauga are just as quick on a break of their own. They've got someone in the clear. If they're able to execute the cross, there it is, but it's... Two, and... Uh who knows, that looks like it could be one of the uh, Mississauga strategies in this game is to uh, counter-attack. Fortunately for the Whitby team, Steve, they had a superb defender down there. He did a, a great job. Yes, that's right, Doug. He did, a, did very well. He was in position to prevent the cross. And now Mississauga try and move forward. But there's no support up front, and the ball is once again played back to the center area. Now they've got some players moving forward. And unable to catch up with it was Paul Nova. Whitby in the yellow and Mississauga in the blue. At the beginning, you know, the first 15, 20 minutes, you're just trying to feel each other out. You don't want to go down too, 
too early. I think as the game wears on, we'll see ya. And now Mississauga have a chance. Coming forward with that ball is Jaron Wells. Wells is in all alone. He's deep. There's the shot on the wide angle. He scores! And what a beautiful rush by Wells. He played that ball perfectly. And for a moment, I thought he'd gone in too far, Paul, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Or I'm sorry, Steve. Yes, uh, Doug, it was uh, an excellent individual effort. We're going to see a little replay here for your viewers at home. Now, he has a defender there, but watch him go by. Yes, he does a great individual effort. Takes him on. And it's a great shot just inside the goal post. Positioned himself perfectly. Nothing the goal farther, but uh, nonetheless, Wells placed that shot. It was a great shot. individual effort, Doug. I has drawn first blood. First half. The end, and they will try to set up down there with the throw in. And they're unable to do anything with that. And we'll try once again. And now uh, Whitby moved the ball forward. But Mississauga are quick to take. And it's just back and forth at this point. And one thing that Mississauga seem to have working in their favor here in the early going is uh, speed. They're using that to their advantage. We noticed that on the goal. Yes, Doug, it seems they have a little bit smaller team and they have some good, good fellows with good speed. And an impressive play by Jaron Wells on the first goal. that stole the ball and battling for it there was the Silva for Whitby but he was unable to come up with it Mississauga now moved the ball forward and there's Wells once again and across to the left side of the field and they're setting up they've got three players in around there that are looking to do something with it and it's down over in front now They've still got possession, and they move in for a good opportunity, and there's the shot. gain control in their own end intercepted an indecisive pass there at ball well this tournament has been running now for over 20 years and I think it's growing in success and size each year we're down inside 20 minutes to play in this first half. And it is Mississauga 1 and Whitby no score. Mississauga are in close once again. That 18 yard box. More hungry for that ball seem to be winning those 50-50s. And they have the Whitby team running around a little bit unorganized at this point. It's Doug, they haven't really had within 35 yards. As the game goes on, they'll settle down and start creating. And Whitby now are trying to gain control of the ball. It's out toward the center line. And battling it for there are a couple of Whitby players coming forward, but just losing it, unable to keep up with that ball was Matt Whelan. And uh, Mississauga did mark it, knock it out.
and he goes to once again the tall Mr. Paul Novak and he's someone that perhaps we might watch for Whitby he appears to be the, the guy that would be the striker so to speak and there's a shot and once again it's back out into neutral territory Mississauga trying But it's into a crowd of Mississauga players, unfortunately. There by Shannon, but he could not make the final move for a clear shot. Nonetheless, the pressure is still on. Mississauga are all around the... Novak took it, which uh, I don't think should have really, he's, he's a striker and he was taking the throw in and he really threw it right into the Mississauga defense. Showed some good moving it up the field. Yes, indeed, that, that quickness that we've mentioned before, Steve. And now it's Mississauga with the ball down in the Whitby area once again with a throw in. And they take possession. And there's the cross, it's just a little bit. And right now, we have an interview arranged with Jane Dempsey. She's on the sideline. Out and they... to their uh, benefit to realize not one of those things where you can really go uh, definite this you uh, have M now for about three years you've had your scooter you're very very much involved still with soccer I wonder if you can tell me what you feel the direction is that soccer is going to take in the next few years uh, I sense now that it is starting to uh, and that two clubs are the city in there about four years. Girl, and uh, we will have a replay for you of uh, some of the action that took place. Here we can get a look at a close call. Just take a look here, as we see around that Whitby net. Here we go now. This is it, and Mississauga in close, and look at that ball. It's just shot away at the last moment by a defender there, but the ball is still knocked through. And there's some of the height used by Mississauga, and that ball just knocked wider than that, Steve. Yes, Doug, it was a, it was a good cross. There seemed to be a little miscommunication. The goalie came out for it, and the defender cleared at the same time, and they both got a little caught out of position, and they were actually very fortunate uh, not to be down 2 nothing. And uh, then it, that interview by Jane just gives you an idea of some of the, the fine volunteers. Oh, right there, very quick. Now watch the cross here. What a fine cross again. Doug, I believe well. it was number six. That's right. Jason Shannon did well to finish. Again. So it has clearly been Whitby's half. 
We're down to eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. There you see the score, Mississauga two, Whitby nothing. And this is the boys under 12 final. But Whitby now are trying to make something of it down around that Mississauga end, but the defense for Mississauga has been sharp and they're not allowing Whitby too much access to that goal. And of the uh, the backcourt of the uh, of the Mississauga team. Here right now for just a moment and it's going to be a free kick. You've got the for Whitby. You see Mississauga setting up the wall. They've got three players. Mississauga seems to be pushing well up on the 18-yard box, giving a little bit of space in behind. Let's see if we can get uh, one of the Whitby players to make a good little run in there, but it looks like they're going to take a shot on the net. And it is a good shot. And it curls down in toward the far post, but it's easily grabbed. and he could not get by the Whitby defender. But they, they, the Mississauga team, at this point, having the two goal legs, they've gained a lot of confidence offensively, and we can see the way they handle the ball up there, Steve. We're down just inside five and a half minutes in this first half. Saga's game at not to say Whippy doesn't want to but uh, who knows Whippy might be a little bit uh, tired they seem seem to be a little sometimes second to the ball and uh, large at this point oh I'm sure they've settled down now after you know it's always important to break get out early a couple goals and uh, I think uh, the next goal is going to be very important. Here we have an opportunity for it in close, and there it is. Yes, indeed, on the rebound after the initial shot. And he was in an opportune spot for the rebound, Steve. Yes, it was a good, couple good moves there. Once again, with number six. A sh shot saved by the goalie, and once again, there's a Mississauga player winning the loose balls. And I was just at that, just before goal most important one and that seems to seems to be the clincher at this if Mississauga keeps playing the way they do yes indeed it's now a three nothing edge and McCann got that goal but the two players that have really done a lot for Mississauga offensively are of course our first goal scorer Jaron Wells and number six Jason Shannon who's done a, a fine job yes now, both, both players have impressed me Mississauga come forward with perhaps their best chance, but the ball is for them to get that. The trophy. and try and get at least one back before this half's out. Uh. But it's Mississauga that are coming forward with another opportunity. And there is... ...on the wide... ...before...
perhaps on the landing when he, he when he came out to block that shot. He went down very quickly to get low. He hasn't had much help from his defenders. He's There and there is run out on the clock, but of course the referee is going to add a little bit for injury time with the goaltender. Of course the referee keeps the official time. And there's the kick. The whole, the and would be try and move it toward that neutral area out to the center. Once again, in front of that, pardon me, it's Mississauga in front of the Whitby net. And great would be bottled up. And they have even more of a chance. They're buzzing around that 18-yard box looking for the one clear shot. Here is a cross. Once again, we should be down to about a minute, no telling how much time left, but there you see, it's knocked away by the Whitby player, and there's a header, yes indeed, and in the final minute of the play, Mississauga, you... That's right, it's short corner, and... Riot is the goal scorer. And you know, Steve, they don't have the height up front, place and and they've used that offensive instinct and uh, Whitby have been unable to do anything at all here in the first half but let's not forget that this played great soccer to get here and that concludes the first half It's 4 nothing at the end of the first half, and Whitney has a, a huge hill to climb, Steve. Yeah, it's, it's going to be quite an uphill battle. Uh, they're going to have to come out firing right from the beginning and uh, taking some chances, but uh, I don't uh, see it from a realistic standpoint. Too much of a tough battle. And right now, let's throw it down to Debbie on the sidelines. here for a minute as we had a, an injury there from Mississauga. David McCann is going off the field. tournament and to get here at all is quite an accomplishment oh exactly Doug it's uh, just a just a, an achievement itself just to go through all those games but so quickly it's again it's Jaron Wells for Mississauga and he didn't have anyone with him. A weak kick is easily handled once again. 
but I'm sure that at this stage, Mississauga are satisfied just to keep the ball in the Whitby half and not worry too much about scoring opportunities. Lead. There's no real need to score anymore. Well, of course, on any given day, as we've mentioned before, the result could be very different here. I'm really surprised that Whitby has not been able to take advantage of some of the size that into one of the shorter players on the team that was A night. He did a nice job to get it to, to Silva, who moves forward but is taken down. Still they press on into the Whitby end. Now Mississauga end, but the Mississauga team turned that aside. To the center, but there's no one there to receive his pass. Mississauga move the ball forward once again and it's the Silva chasing after he wasn't able to, and neither was Paul Novak and that and Novak will not be taking the throw And it's in the neutral area right now. And the kick was just, the pass was just off the mark. And now Whitby seemed to be, uh, well, they've got an injured player down. But Whitby now are playing a better second half, Steve. They've, uh, they've gained a little bit of enthusiasm. And, and they're pressing inside that Whitby end a little bit. Yeah, the coach must have had a little talk with them at halftime, tell them, hey, get out there and work a little harder and hustle a little bit more. And He knows they're probably tired, but he's, he's probably giving them a good kick in the you-know-what. <laughs> <laughs> Saying, this is all we have left, so let's give it our all. But they do have an injured player on the field. Not sure quite what the problem is, but he's examining the player's lower leg. To get it going on the offense and uh, Right now, we're once again going to go down to Jane on the sidelines, who has an interview. Well, we'll be right, right with you in a minute, but at first, Mississauga are defending against Whitby. Whitby have a... ...the all summer. ...at a much greater level. And three girls teams enter this year, and we have in Whitby play in. Well, the uh, the parents naturally they pay a registration fee. Uh, there is an extra fee if they're going to play rep soccer, but most of our funding comes from the Whitby Iroquois soccer. 102 house um, we make uh, you know we show a bit of a profit another great opportunity 
Yes, as a as a member. Well, I think it's indicative of uh, the the sport of soccer and uh, the communities in the surrounding areas, such as fine fine programs that uh, pay off in in uh, good. for Canadian soccer in the future. And it's Mississauga once again with an opportunity around that Whitby net. They've set up well. They've got the netminder. It's a good and French it, name. Yes, indeed. That's <laughs> why I had a problem with it. <laughs> this game. This game uh, brings back memories for me. In, in my Robbie final, I, uh, we had won the game 5 nothing, and at this 4 nothing, Mississauga, you just, you just enjoy the game so much more, and you're just so relaxed, and you say, hey, we want to play all day long like this. And on the other hand, you, Whitby is probably going, well, kind of it's all over now, and you get a little bit more tired. all they can and they will try to get a goal here in the late going pass now they have to set up as the defense comes back and turning with it Schleifer makes the kick in and no back and Mississauga defense standing of everyone deep The ball is in the net. I'm not sure how they're going to, if that goal will count. I believe it does. The Whitby goaltender came out and tried to pounce on the ball. And hopefully we'll be able to get a replay on that. Uh, seem the goal, I, I thought the goalie had it. And he seems to be injured now. So did I, but it was just not, was knocked away from him. Here, let's have a look at the good pursuit here by the Whitby player. Oh, it's right, he never really had control of the ball. No, he didn't, so the score is indeed 5 nothing, and we didn't see who scored the goal. Couldn't get his number on the replay, but perhaps we'll hear an announcement. And it may have perhaps been Andrew Rozak, you see number 5 there. And a very tough game for... goal, number 5, Andrew Rozak. Yes, indeed, it was Rozak. And uh, earlier I had said about the goaltender. Now, Kirk Latibodier is the goaltender for Mississauga. At least he's wearing number one. But he has been <coughs> outstanding here in the second half. A lot of pressure and uh, paid off in another Mississauga goal. We're down to 15 minutes remaining on the clock. And of course, the official will allow some injury time. Whitby now with a fresh... ...from the Mississauga frontline players. And unfortunately for Whitby, it's Novak that tripped over the ball. But Novak now is in a good position to receive the pass. He does so, and there's the kick. Oh, and he scores! It edges just inside the... ball played through to the man is just to go inside the, the post and let's on the replay watch who it was who gave him the pass now we can't catch his number but the pass was a superb one through two Whitby defenders right in position for Novak to put the good shot on net that made it over the outstretched hands of the goaltenders off and that'll give them give them some spirit to go for the last 14 minutes of this final period. And once again, Mississauga come right back after that goal. Now they
They're unable to pursue and get the offensive help. Now making a fine run for it is Schleifer. Schleifer is right down the center. He's got a good chance. There's a pass in, and Novak has it once again. Through, and uh, once again, he... here. <laughs> you know these are tough. And uh, there is a chance to do it indeed. And it's in the Mississauga end momentarily. Knocked out into the neutral area now. And I think the difference in this game is we get down to ten and a half minutes playing, in playing time now. Uh, in the first half the whole difference. And now Mississauga have a break going in with no one around and a chance at a good shot taken there by a couple good moves and had an excellent opportunity on, fortunately on. shot it at able to stand firm and make the save here we see another opportunity down in there and the would-be goaltender has to scramble back into his net after making the save and here now as we get down to the final Ten minutes of or pardon me, Miss And he knocks it forward as Ripestra or Ripestra. I'll talk to you. And uh, we can see that if they had started that way that we'd be in a much closer contest rate. Uh, Steve was that indeed and that was the difference. 5-1 is the score. We're down inside eight and a half minutes on the clock now and we'll see if Whitby can come forward and perhaps from all which a lot of these other teams that are here from overseas they you know they look and say hey I can make a career out of playing soccer or you know and something they have something to strive for so they keep working at it spending a lot of time well, of course, soccer is in, and we see now with Whitby pressing forward once again, but it is back to the goaltender, and that chance is no more. But I think that, uh, of course, soccer here in Canada is still in the infant stages, and the organizations and programs of the other countries that come here to play. Uh, for that Mississauga team, he's been a factor for them all through this afternoon's game. But uh, I think that would give you an idea, perhaps, of just how it is in other countries. Soccer being second. Sports. And uh, it certainly is hockey. It's around the world. It is. It's stage. And a good opportunity. Up. And also opportunities, but you still you got to play as a team. Two players or three players, you can't rely on them, but they've really played well as a team. Yes, indeed. And uh, Rozak, if we continue to watch him, yes, but it's been really an ideal day for soccer because it's not the overwhelming heat and uh, not a lot of humidity which is just ideal for these these lads running around as they do keep the energy level high for age
number 14 Wells. He uh, certainly knows where the net is, and as soon as he gets on his foot, he, he takes a shot, and which is, you know, it's important. You can't uh, score if you don't shoot, and every time he seems to get the ball, he's looking for a shot. There is another blast, and yes, it's just inside the post. Off the defense. Minder, but he, he and just inside it's a good ball played across the edge of the box and no, no one seems to be challenging it's an excellent shot it does cross the line now I said 30 yards but indeed it was taken just inside that 18 yard box right at the line so it was an ideal place to shoot and he really let it go, O'Connor did. And Whitby once again have it down toward the Mississauga end, and they're trying to do something with it in the last two and a half minutes of this game. Is what we have left in this under-12 final. be quite as good but we've really improved over the years and perfect example is these two teams here a couple of years there Steve and you may have to watch out for that position exactly goal, exactly <laughs> it, it bodes so well for uh, soccer in the future as we've mentioned already the youth uh, programs and uh, results like this skilled players responding well under the pressure of the rock down to now. And at this stage, I think they're just playing it out, Steve. Yeah, it seems that uh, Mississauga is going to be the 1992 under 12 champions. With Something they'll remember for a long time to come. And congratulations to them. Well, congratulations to both teams, really. As I said, making it to the final, a great accomplishment. A one-sided match this afternoon, but both teams well represented here. Once again, Mississauga not resting on their laurels here. They're down toward that net again, looking for more opportunities. And they want to enjoy this for all it's worth. And Whitby are hard-pressed to have any more opportunities here and I'm sure that if they could come up with another goal that would please them immensely and it was the three first period goals that started things and they've coasted here in the second half with three more goals and Whitby has answered with only one hence the difference 6-1 the score at this stage and we are down into the final seconds on the clock. We'll see how much time is added for injuries. And there is another opportunity. That ball up around the crossbar, taken by the netminder, knocking it away from danger into the neutral area, where it is out. And it will be a Whitby throw-in. Perhaps Whitby will have a chance to have one final press forward. Now, there is a Mississauga player down on the field. That's right, I'm very really impressed with some of these young players. out in Vancouver that we were talking about is uh, yeah they've got uh, big size out there strive for five they're trying to go for five CSL titles and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, stand in their way all right well we are inside the final minute of play I'm sure here Whitby with one final chance and Novak tried to come forward but the ball was taken away from him on a good defensive play now Whitby come forward with everyone But they're unable to get it by the stiff Mississauga defense. And the team in blue from Mississauga will be the 1992 Robbie International 
soccer tournaments under 12. There'll be a throw in from the Whitby team. And I'm sure this game is just about to end. We'll have perhaps one final push from the Whitby team to see if they can set up an opportunity on net. There's the throw in. And we're going to do it again. Edge right back out. And there, once again, Whitby take the ball away. Pardon me, Mississauga take the ball away from the Whitby team. And an opportunity now. Joran Wells once again is forward. The striker has another chance. And he plays it wide. There's no offensive help with him. Yet he hangs onto that ball until the help is there. Finally, he plays it in, and it's grabbed by the Whitby netminder. Out into the neutral area once again, where Whitby pick it up. And they will move forward. And we're still going on here. Quite a bit of time added on at the end of this. Yeah, I think uh, referee's uh, adding a few extra minutes for injury time. Letting them play it out and enjoy it. And Mississauga, as I said, no quit in them. They move forward for another opportunity here. The ball is wide. They're looking for the cross. There it is. And a good oh. shot is in for another goal. And that appeared to be, from our vantage point, it looked like O'Connor again. <laughs> exactly the same spot he scored his uh, earlier goal. Another excellent shot with his left foot. And we'll have a look at it on the replay. Watch the good cross. Sure O'Connor's second goal of the game. A lot of strength behind that boot. Exactly, an impressive left foot. The score now is 7-1 to one then for Whitby. And that's the final whistle. Over Mississauga, over Whitby. And there it is, the 1992 Robbie International Under-12 Champions is the team representing Mississauga. And you see the elation on the field now. And as you say, Steve, this is something they're going to remember for many, many years to come. Certainly will. And uh, this is a perfect game for all those critics who say... Uh, there's not enough goals in soccer. We had eight in this game, and, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty impressive. Yes, indeed it is. A lot of exciting action. And as the team uh, gets a center to shake...